but I want to share a story with you. So I see there's only one person in the room, but that's okay. Uh, it'll just post to my channel. So uh, let me turn this around a second. Um, so you see, for most people, I live in Colorado, and there's Pikes Peak right here. So it gets pretty cold in the winter. And um, uh, when I, uh, let me just turn this around. When I adopted Gracie up in Brighton, Colorado about four year, five years ago, uh, I had purchased a turtle that they had in the, in the shelter because uh, she was in a little tiny aquarium and I figured, well, I can do better for that. So people who've been on my channel a lot know I bought some property down in Southeast Texas and we moved there. I'm from Colorado. Uh, and I took that turtle with me and uh, I, I built an enclosure for her over there and, you know, similar to this and, you know, just trying to give her the best life. So this year, this past year in January, uh, a deep freeze was on its way and it was going to get below zero and I had the turtle inside, but she was, uh, she wasn't wanting to hibernate yet. So the day before the, uh, the deep freeze, uh, the day before the deep freeze, uh, it was like, it, it's like it is out now. It's like almost 70 degrees out. It was beautiful. So I figured, well, since she's not in hibernation, I'll bring her out here. Well, uh, I put her in this enclosure here. And when I come out together in the evening, the night before it was supposed to drop below zero, uh, I couldn't find her. And I had dug everywhere in there. And I'd done probably a hundred circles around this yard, turning everything, looking for her. I dug everything up and I couldn't find her. And I'm gonna tell you what, I'm telling you this story is crazy. I stood right, right here, front of my garage after spending six hours looking for her. And I said, Lord, I'll take one for the team. If you can just find my turtle for me. And I shit you not, 10 minutes later, the lady next door came to my, came to my front door with a turtle, a tortoise just like mine. and said, look, I found Betty. And I couldn't believe it. It was like a miracle, especially 10 minutes earlier. I just said, Lord, help me find this turtle after searching for six hours and I'll take one for the team. Well, let me show you this real quick. At that time, I was bringing wood in uh, and you know, she can't get out of here or she couldn't. And at the time uh, I had this gate open here. She can't get out anywhere. Uh, I mean, this, this place is sealed up pretty tight. And my neighbor, she's like 85 years old. Uh, she was sitting on this wall right here. And she was just picking up sticks down in there. And she found my turtle right here. Uh, and I couldn't believe it. And she came over to the door and said, look, Mike, I found your turtle. I tell you, I couldn't believe it. Well, this is kind of a bittersweet story but it's crazy so i took her in and you know that night the following night it dropped below zero and she would have never made it uh you know the, you know 40 degrees is like tops for a tortoise and she should have been down in the ground or hibernating inside by then so this is the sad part the turtle uh you know i would i would bathe her I would put her in water, she wouldn't eat. And the sad part is I went to check on her. I, I mean, I'll just show you. When I hibernate my turtle, I put her in like a, a plastic bin with some dirt and she goes in there and I'll just put her in this closet here where it's dark in the tub. And every now and then I'll go in there and just touch her foot and uh, make sure she's still good and sleeping. Well, this particular turtle would never went into hibernation and I went to check on her one day and she, well, I'll just show you. 
it's this is bittersweet but she was dead and i have her in here uh because my other dog ruby who i just had to put down i'm going to find a nice place for him but you can see her in there uh, and she's the same type of tortoise there's different kinds of tortoises so uh really quick so i was out i was out in the front yard piddling around uh when i was in south dakota last year i still have some cedar stumps so i was kind of putting stuff in here and doing things and i had a wheelbarrow here full of dirt that because i buried some of these stumps and then uh I was walking back here. Look at this. Everything's starting to come up. This place is going to be so beautiful when uh when it all starts coming up. Anyway, so I come back here. I'm pushing the wheelbarrow. And remember the turtle had died and I thought Betty had died and it was it was very distraughtful. So I wheeled that wheelbarrow over here because it was full of dirt and I had put all kinds of wildflower seeds in here. So I had already mixed it with some soil and I was spreading some dirt over here and I come over here to spread some dirt and I looked down and on that, that green shrub that's coming up, my turtle Betty was there eating. I couldn't believe it. And here she is here. That's my turtle. So she had eluded me and burrowed way down in there and I couldn't find her. But I'm gonna tell you, the craziest part is, what are the chances one in a trillion that I lost my tortoise, not a, not a box turtle, a tortoise that I adopted. I lost her, the neighbor found her, so we thought, 10 minutes after I said, God, I'll take one for the team. And I thought that was Betty. And that was it, Betty died. And then I'm gonna bury her, I'm gonna find a nice place in the mountains that faces east and bury her in. Betty together or now it's an unknown turtle but the chances of another tortoise being there when I said that when my tortoise was missing is uh is one in a trillion I mean you could try to play the lottery your whole life and not hit it but it's it's absolutely mind-boggling uh, it is a tortoise but just just the 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 events that took place that my tortoise is missing. I looked for six hours. The neighbor came over and said, I found your tortoise. It died. I thought it was all over. And the whole time she was out here in the enclosure that she had buried herself and made it through the winter. I just, I can't believe that she made it through the winter. And that whole thing transpired like that. Yeah. Anyway, guys, so a couple of updates. Uh, you know, of course, you know Grace and Roxy. Uh, but th I, bought, I bought this little sweet girl for Christmas. Lucy, where are you? Lucy, oh, there she is. Lucy, and I'll tell you, her and Grace are the best friends Lucy, come here, Lucy. There's Addie. That's little Lucy. I call her my little Muppet face. Hi, little Lucy. She's a little miniature schnauzer. And Addie, she weighs about eight or uh, 14 pounds, but she's almost full grown. She's about six months old, five months. And she weighs seven pounds, but she is the smartest dog. Hi, Lucy. I can't wait to get her out in the mountains. 
But anyway, I just wanted to share that turtle story with you all. And, you know, I haven't checked in at all for a while. Uh, I just, it's just mind blowing. And it's so bittersweet. It's like I got an unknown turtle, tortoise. And it's just the, the, uh, the tortoise, yeah. She, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's just no words for it. It's just so mind-boggling. I, I literally about fell over dead when I seen my turtle. And you know, when I went to adopt Grace, wherever she is, Grace, uh, when I went to adopt her up in Brighton, uh, like I say, she uh, uh, was in this little tiny, tiny, tiny glass tank. And I was like, well, that's pretty jacked up. So I tried to give her the best life possible and she cannot get out of here. And I had a, a, a little deal right here, a piece of flagstone. And this right here was her, her little, uh, her little, her little hut. And I might put it back over there, but, uh, this is where she stays all summer. And in about a month, month and a half, this will have, flowers and 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 little shrubs and all kinds of things that you know like a natural habitat and it's just perfect for her and like i say in the winter i usually i do bring her in and she sleeps for about five months anyway uh i'm going to be going to south dakota uh the last week of this month I think like the 25th and I got some places that I'm gonna go uh, that's gonna be uh, I'm pretty excited to go there uh, I want to show you guys this chair I made over the winter so this was a large uh, a large tree and it was one tree that grew and it had two Two large branches that came out of it you see one here and one there and I worked on this and this is where between the two trees the bark tried growing and watch this though so that cracks not in the back it's just out right here and this thing is as smooth as glass and I got like six layers of polyurethane on it but on the front I put a Ecclesiastic 7 2 and 4 says uh it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go into the house of feasting for that is the end of all men and the living will lay it to its heart the heart of the wise is in the house of the morning mourning like sadness grieving but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth and then on the back let me turn this light on and then on the back this took forever on the back, this is 1 Corinthians 13, the whole love. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I can read it if you guys care to hear it. Uh, if you guys want to say yay or nay. And then this goes all the way up under. All right. I'll read it real quick. I need to shut this garage door because the, the glare. So I got this one starting. Uh, I just shaped it. It's got the cross and the Bible. But anyway, this says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have all the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardships that I may boast, but I do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. 
It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and in prophecy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in the part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. For we know now, for, for, we, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall fully, that I know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three things remain, hope, faith, and love, but the greatest of these is love. But that is, uh, that is the chair. And I've shown some of these before. I'll show you a couple more. I really don't know what I'm going to do with them. I got that one all started. I got some uh, uh, acrylic resin to put in there, but these are just a bunch bigger ones. This one here, they're all done. That's got the cross on it and the and a Bible, and they're like as smooth as glass. This was my first one. I really like this one. And it has a, a spot here where you could set a candle. And this was all one piece. It's kind of cool. This one here took forever carving this out that was so much work getting back in here but this is a piece of cottonwood it's crappy wood but it's got a beautiful grain and that one here the grain on this one's really nice got the bible this one here is kind of similar to this this one over here with the crack in it but this is split all the way down to the bottom. And it's I pinned it all the way through eight different ways to lock it together so it didn't split apart. This is a piece of cedar right here. Yeah, just all kinds of this one's not done. But this one here. It's not done. It's summertime, so I got other things to do. I got three crosses here. One, two, three. I'm going to do all them, and I wish I would have left some stuff here in the front to make some, like, some hills, but this one will be pretty cool. And this one. Anyway. Uh... I guess that's all I wanted to tell you. I just uh, wanted to touch base, tell you the story, and uh, let you know I'll be going to South Dakota and I'll have some new content for you. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to see some, some incredible stuff. Um, yeah, other than that, I'll just sit down a minute and see if there's any questions or whatever before we call it. Okay. Where's everybody from? Is everybody from the United States here? Yeah, I, Tabby, I've sold a few. I sold one to one of my subscribers, but when it got there it was all, it, it broke so i don't know how it broke but uh maybe the guys dumped it off arizona glass glow uh, texas and canada cool hawaii maui yeah bad stuff there michigan and new zealand yeah you guys are from everywhere i can't read that one Maybe somewhere in the Middle East. 
Scotland, Christ Church. Huh. Where's Christ Church at? New Hampshire. Where's Christ Church? Is that a place or? No, I've never worked uh, Co Coa Wood, England. Wow. Pennsylvania. Denmark. Jeez, there's people from all over the world. New Zealand, a beautiful place there. Ohio. Uh oh, Melissa, what is that? South Island, New Zealand. Christ Church. Where's that, Carl? Oh, Island. Is that New Zealand? Is that, is that where uh, that them two moths were uh, shot up? Is that where you're at? Or is the Christ Church a place, uh, an island and a church? Yeah, that Christ Church shooting in New Zealand was a uh, uh, some crazy, crazy stuff. St. John. There's people here literally from one end to the other. That's pretty cool. Oh, you had a knock on the door, huh? Did anybody here ever watch uh, way back right after that Christchurch shooting uh, the pretty uh, detailed uh, video that Max Egan did on it? Did any of, you, any of you guys ever watch that? He literally had to leave New Zealand because of that. I still got a good portion of the video but uh you know if you put it on anywhere uh mary you've seen it yeah it's crazy it was definitely uh an inside job um pretty crazy there's no doubt about it especially with the people that dressed in red and when uh you know he went in he was there at the his car in the alley after shooting up the first mosque and uh you know whether he's a shill or not i don't know but he sure broke it down uh pretty good uh after he shot the people in the mosque he's out to get the gas can and somebody's talking to him in his ear because there's other people escaping he quit uh he dropped the gas cans went over there and uh to get them other people and it was like he's on a timeline because he was talking to someone. And when he went back to the car, he put the gas in. He says, it's not going to burn today, boys. But the whole thing is just pretty crazy. Yeah, I, you know, I don't follow Max Egan. I just happened to watch that back then. But uh, he definitely put out some convincing, uh, tangible, undeniable proof. But anyway, that, you know, yeah, <laughs> Alistair Crowley, huh? Yeah, you know, we live in such a crazy world. Uh, it's beyond crazy. That's if, uh, I mean, I'm sure most people here keep up with it, but uh, it is, I think back when I was, uh, you know, a teenager back in the 80s and how simple life was, or even for uh, the World War II Vietnam veteran generation, you know, that were younger back in the 50s, how, how simple and, and 
basically good life was and now it's just man it is there's just uh there's no words for it max wants you to think it's real well i don't know uh sure a lot of convincing stuff uh or they would have some some matrix type uh effects you know i uh yeah i got a lot of the videos man especially like the the guy that went into the supermarket uh man it's pretty graphic but anyway uh i hope you guys are all doing good My favorite color is probably green. Green and like a, a light blue. On your site, Michelle, what are you asking? Uh, I don't see what you're asking. Tell you a joke? Hmm. It's too long. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. My neighbor who found the turtle, the elderly woman, she's like 85. She's in a hospital now. She's Her lungs aren't holding oxygen like uh, her saturation level. But other than that, just waiting to go to South Dakota animals i do animals are uh best thing on this planet on this earth you know whatever you want to call it it looks like the wife got home you get him there okay all right yeah as for my channel yeah it's it's so shadow banned uh i mean i yeah i don't do this for subscribers but uh you know i'm surprised i'll be you know i'm even on there and they don't take my stuff off like they do a lot of other people uh my favorite animal you know i i, I like the sloth uh but yeah, my channel, it's so shadow banned. And, you know, it's crazy. I see people on all social medias just, you know, using small clips of some of my videos, which is fine. And there are literally hundreds of thousands or, or millions of views and people and comments. But my stuff, for some reason, uh, it, it's, it's so regulated and censored. Um, but that's okay, as long as it's still there and people can, can see it. Yeah, you know, it's winter, so it's hard to get out into the hills. You know, it's it's cold. You know, I live in the northern states, Colorado and upward. Yeah, they don't want the truth. So, I am 57, 1966. So last year, uh, hey Natasha, last year uh, we had hail really bad throughout the first, you know, the first part of spring for like a month and a half. So all these tubs were full of uh, cucumbers and tomatoes and this, and they just kept kept getting beat up. And then once they finally did grow. Uh, the damn squirrels would eat my squash and tomatoes and everything. So I'm not doing any of that this year. Uh, all these bands, this and these, these run all the way over there. And this whole thing and this here is all going to be a 
flowers and wildflowers. You can see it. everything's starting to come up here. That there are some columbines, Colorado columbines, and everything's coming up here. These get a lavender flower on them, but it goes on and on. And I put this up, and I haven't had one bird come in here yet. So hopefully this year I put another one there. And up there, I put a little squirrel house. Uh, they don't live in it for some reason, but they'll go in it and fight on who's inside of it for, uh, for any given time. So I've been, been thinking, let me open this garage door. So I've been thinking, you know, I'm just not smart enough because I don't have the knowledge on, uh, you know, people can think I'm crazy or, or whatever, but you know, I've, I, last year I started what I tried on a series of, uh, the periodic table and I've done a couple videos on a few things, but, uh, it's really hard to show something as crazy as that, like as crazy as me telling you that that dog right there is a chicken, okay? Uh, even though we know it's not a chicken, that just about everything comes from, uh, uh, that's on the periodic table is a direct property of the biblical trees through all the hard rock mining. All the different metals and minerals are in the rock and uh, which are petrified tree remains. But the, the one that got to me the most uh, is, is the gold, the, con the copper, the conductive metals that were in the tree. And, you know, I know that sounds crazy to just about anybody. We don't talk Mud Fossil University here. Anyway, uh, why uh, the metals were in it? I mean, we know that there's like electromagnetic, the 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 magnetic north, and there's energy all around us. Always has been. All the different radio waves and microwaves and gamma rays, all the energy that's around us. What was the original purpose of having these conductive metals in the tree? Because, you know, it's a common denominator. You know, forget what science and the mainstream says, because it's all, everything they say is a lie. So, uh, so you have the, you have the gold, say in these, you know, mile wide trees and, and not all of them. Okay. And I'm sure it wasn't all of them, but, uh, and maybe it was just a couple particular ones, you know, maybe it was part of the tree of life, tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't know, but what I do know is that the gold miners and the prospectors always look for the gold veins. And I, I mean, the, the quartz veins. I've seen quartz veins, you know, you have a completely different scale. You know, like this is a piece of petrified wood, but these are like what you would call the quartz veins and the gold's in it. This is the petrified sap, okay? So, If, and you won't, won't find one without the other. So if the quartz is the petrified sap and the gold is in the quartz, well, it's a common denominator, okay? And it's everywhere. So, uh, so Flat Earth Brothers did a, a video with, a, I think it was an architect or engineer in the last day or two, uh, explaining the flat earth and, and some really technical stuff. Uh, but somebody like that, who's a believer in the true creation and who's a Christian and who has the intelligence on a level that can 
understand the frequencies and the, the electromagnetic and the energy that's all around us to try to put something together on why uh, uh, why it was in the tree, the purpose, or what it could have been for. But I seen someone mention something about iron. Iron is iron was also in the tree, I, and I, I know you said it, it wasn't, but you know, you see the iron. You have magnetite, and what they call iron pyrite, which I've explained it before that. You know, there's, there's a process to, from, with anything, from a beginning stage and the end stage and everywhere in between, okay? So, I've done a lot of prospecting. I've worked in the gold mines, so I have a little bit of knowledge on this. So, like, you have gold, pure gold, and then you have iron pyrite, which is uh, fool's gold, what they call it. It's iron, iron pyrite. And then you have what's in between there, which is called chalcopyrite, and it has, uh, it's more uh, iron pyrite bearing, but it has gold along with it. So, once again, a common denominator is, so you have gold, chalcopyrite in the middle, and iron pyrite, and that they're all one of the same, just a different process, it didn't fully, uh, reach its potential, so to speak. The salt is not from the giants. You know, I, so, you know, that's, there's people in here that listened way too much to uh, Mud Falsy University, and uh, that does strike a really hard chord with me because uh, people had need to use some discernment. Um, so there's a channel. For those who want a little humor, I think it's Sir Sick, S-I-R-S-I-C. -S and if you scroll through his videos, he does a lot of uh, videos on Mud Fossil University. Uh, you will find it quite amusing. And maybe for those who watch that guy, uh, might wake up and understand that they're being bamboozled. It's yeah, uh, it's uh, it's just crazy, man. But anyway, back to the gold being in the trees. Uh, what was the original purpose? You know, the creation itself is, you know, just when I walk around here, I'm in the mountains in the springtime, like in South Dakota, just looking at creation, everything's starting to grow is, is mind boggling. Everything is mind boggling create in creation. Stephanie McGuire, I'm glad you, you, you actually see it. But listen, the channel is Sir Sick, S-I-R-S-I-C. And if you look, watch his videos on Mud Falls University, uh, you'll get a good laugh. He's probably got a dozen or two. And I know there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, they get their feelings hurt and, you know, that's okay. Uh, that's not my intention, you know, but some people, they just, they can't, they can't see beyond uh, what someone tells them. Look, to be honest with you, I was going to do a video. Uh, let me see. Uh, confronting this, this stuff with Roger at Mudfoss University. Uh, let me see here. looking here and you know I, I I just hate to get into all that all that uh, all that stuff but you know it angers me because uh, I, I just can't believe that people would listen to half of that crap you know it, it the guy probably knows his stuff with uh, chemistry and biology or whatever, but, uh, you know, I don't even know how to say it. Like, I've talked with uh, 
Mike from Stolian 7 quite a bit about this and he finally gets it so uh you know and, and Mike's a pretty intelligent guy and Mike I'll say one thing about Mike from Stolian 7 he's uh I talked with him quite a bit yeah you know, we've done uh, video calls and you know quite a bit and I'll tell you um, uh, Mike is a very humble very honest guy you know he's a uh, he's one of the few guys that I will talk to about anything because you know he's, he's just a humble guy he's he's respectful uh, he's looking for the truth and uh, he'll ad yeah, you know, he's just a good guy. And Terry, Terry from Flat Out Truth, I've talked with him a couple of times. He's also a really good, solid guy. Yeah, Terry's a really good dude. And you know, when it, and, and another guy, his cohort, uh, Roger's cohort, uh, what is his channel? Uh, Mud, uh, what's his name? Mud Fossil Adventures or whatever. Tyson. Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures. That's another one. Uh, you really got to use discernment. Everything, everything is a dragon. And it, for you who have watched my stuff, uh, my stuff is, uh, what did I say? It's self-evident, and I try to show you self-evident truth. But you'll see when you watch their stuff, everything's a dragon. But you got there's this is such a large subject that people got to take into account. There's so much erosion and destruction, and things have worn and weathered, and. Uh, the size of these trees were uh, enormous. Yeah, I, sh I had some stuff I wanted to show you guys, but I didn't set it out. I was going to wait until uh, um, I get back from South Dakota. But these are a few pieces I found at a yard sale. I mean, they pretty much almost gave them to me. This is a really nice piece right here. But see, when I tell you this stuff, it's all inside the tree. It's, a, it's, it's what they call flint. It's still a type of quartz. And, uh, but it's, it comes in different colors. This is what the inside of the tree looks like, just like this stuff. This, this is what they would call flint. This is a beautiful piece. This is one of the pieces I got at the yard sale. Here's a couple more pieces I got. You know, Roger would look at that and tell you, well, this is a, a, a part of a vertebrae, and this is where they connect. Uh, you know, and I could just go on and on, but, you, you know, and you can see the, you look close in there, you could see the interstitching and... and uh, the veins and the blood. Okay, it's stuff like that. So this is this is what's inside the tree. This is what they. This is a type of a uh, type of quartz. Also, uh, I forget the the correct name of it. Uh, but this is flint, and it comes from the tree. This is no different than this. But this is not their favorite word, interstitching. And you see the blood and, and the vein right here. Okay, just a piece of petrified wood. And I got so many pieces over here. Uh, yeah, I might. This is one of my favorite pieces, even though it looks basic. This is a piece of cedar I got last time I was up there. It's so beautiful. And see, this is the calcopyrite right here. This is the calcopyrite, and there's gold in here. 
it looks gold, but it, like it's all gold, but it's not. And this all comes from the tree. This is another piece I got at the yard sale. It's beautiful. And this one here, it's beautiful. This here, this is sap that crystallized from a high heat event, okay? Right here, this is sap that crystallized from a high heat event. This might be a repeat for some people, but I'll show you. Some of my highest treasures are in these bins and you know, it's, but anyway, we should all know how the tree how the tree breaks down and how you get all the flat edges. And I've shown you guys many times in my videos, all these little gaps where you could there, you could walk through them. They're so large, but this is how you get all the flat edges. Okay. So one of these little pieces right here, I showed you that, but and before I go over there, you got to understand the bark was probably feet thick, thick and you see the bark also has rings. These are not scales of a dragon. Okay, this is not the scales of a dragon. I'm going to go over here and show you what I was talking about, but i just show you these little pieces. You know, this piece right here is petrified wood. It's similar to this, but petrified. Here's the tree, and here's the petrified sap. The gold ran in this. So I showed you how, I just told you that this right here does not look, so this is what people recognize petrified wood as, right here. If it doesn't look like this, it's not recognizable to them, okay? But this here, I've, done, I've shown you this in my volcano videos. This here is a piece, part of a piece of wood. I know it don't look like it, but, and these were pockets of sap that heated out and crystallized, okay? The same here. So I got this. This was one of them little pieces, and this was a pocket of sap and it crystallized. And this is what it did. Instead of being quartz like this, like the petrified sap, it crystallized because it was a high heat event and it sucked the life out of this. And I was just telling you about the transitions from like uh, uh, iron pyrite and gold and chalcopyrite, the beginning and an end, and in between, well, this is kind of the same thing. And I've showed you in my uh, uh, volcano videos that this is one, one in between, between a piece of wood, petrified wood, lava rock, and this. There's different stages. This, this was a piece of wood, one of them pieces off the tree I just showed you, how they break down. But after this stage, if it gets hotter, this is what happens to it. This was also a piece of petrified wood, okay? Right here, this was a piece of petrified wood. This was the quartz. And it got so hot, it sucked the life out of it and it started turning into lava rock, okay? If this would have got hotter and hotter and sucked more of the life out, it would have turned into this, okay? For some, that might sound crazy. But I don't know how else to show it to you. You know, this here, you imagine something like that on a massive scale and being petrified, what some people would call it. You know, I'll show you over here. I guess this is a good time to show you this. So I got these few pieces here. 
here throughout over here I'll show you that if you just look at wood there's so many there, there are literally thousands upon thousands of different ways the trees break down and and how, how the tree grows it's like fibers besides breaking down to them little pieces you got to look how this was like a knot part of a root but you see how the tree grows you know and literally uh i have pictures of it like like the devil's tower the hexagonal columns i have pieces of wood or i seen a, i have pieces of a stump that was the exact same thing you come over here and you see you break this apart and you just look all the twists and turns you just look at it on how the tree just how it does this over here at uh it's garden of the gods dog park there's several different cedar rings like this that are probably three feet and they're all laid together like this it's incredible and you come over here to this piece and it's just such a beautiful example uh, like this would have been the center core but just how the how, like a 3d cutout of the tree just how it is and you know like the cedars would have twisted and turned and done all kinds of incredible things you go to like say bryce canyon okay anybody who's familiar with bryce canyon you see this right here okay it's the same thing that's what you're seeing in bryce canyon right here just like this just like this this is what you're seeing in bryce canyon and you see all the different rings in here it goes even though people think rings only do this they also split this way it's like a 3d cutout okay Yeah, you know, and if you break this off, you'll see just how the rings work. You come here, same with this. You know, this this could be uh this could be laid down on the side and you got all these layers. You know, and if you if you look at like in Arizona, uh, all the buttes that are there. If you look at when they enter the ground, everything becomes horizontal. Uh, I don't know why, but and then like I've been up to the Devil's Tower twice, and if you if you if you go back behind it as you're coming in and going up around to where you could park and walk up to it if you go back in there you'll see all the orangish and pinkish part it's all that was the devil's tower was a cedar tree you know and these are just little different pieces i kept so when people see me peel stuff off the wall and stuff you see how oh let me turn it around sorry you see how the tree breaks down okay this is cedar right here okay and i'm showing you in a lot of my videos how well this is preserved when i peel it off and i'll show you a couple pieces here okay everything's like fibers okay the pieces i showed you when i peel off are just like this but from a tree that was double digits wide in miles it's just the way the tree breaks down so you remember just remember this piece right here just all these pieces look at this okay oh this is how the tree breaks down you come over here uh, before i show you that see this is just a different weight all the different rings and uh so you come right over here i'll show you a couple more but these this is petrified okay this is all part of the biblical cedar tree. It's just like I showed you. All these little pieces. 
all this a lot of it's discolored this all these pieces I have in my yard are cedar the large pieces but you come over here I'll show you a couple more So I showed you that this is the way the tree breaks down like that. Like this. But these are pieces from the biblical tree. They all actually fit together. But you see, these are all just like, see that? Let me show you. You see that? I'm just going to go put them side by side. Okay, hold on a minute. And I'll show you that this is cedar. Okay. So all this is cedar right here. Okay. So you look at that. This is all cedar right here. Okay. This is a little faded. see here this one's a little bit a little bit better but this is all cedar you see here and it's the same and you know what's crazy is so I got a bunch of these see how this is like a center core uh, I'll show you. Let me put these back and I'll show you. Oh, let's see here. That goes there. And that goes there. So I'm going to go back over there, but look at this cool. This here is no different than that piece I showed you in the back. That's that piece that has the crystal coming out of it that was high heated. I got it from Devil's Canyon in South Dakota. But this is the same thing. This was so high heated. This is a larger example of what I just showed you back there. So th remember this, this is part of the petrified sap, but this is part of the bark. The mica is the bark. I know that's crazy, but I'm telling you, the mica is the bark of the tree. So re remember that crystal right here. I showed you that piece in the back. I better go this way. This is limestone right here. This is part of the cedar. When I visited the limestone quarry, I did a pretty extent video on it. And I'll show you that this, this limestone is part of the root system of the cedar. But for those that haven't watched my videos, so here's another large piece. Okay, it's kind of like cauliflower. Let me get it in the shade. So you see, this is kind of like cauliflower, but it's dirt and everything but it's all crystal, just like the one I showed you. Okay? But just remember them pieces. Uh, like that piece I showed you in the back, this is part of a tree ring, but it has all the, the, the sap that high heated and crystallized. That's all that is. And I was telling you about the pit. So if you look at this piece of wood right here, you see the center core, that one split, but it was a round, like a round dowel. Okay. Similar to this, I kept a few pieces. And you see, 
this would be the center of the tree, a much larger tree, and this was the center down. And they come out like that. The center dowel, all of these. There's two more. This is the center dowel that was in the trees. I'll show you a couple more. See, like here, this is a probably two foot across. Uh, that's got some stuff in it. Let me see. You can't see that one. It's got crap. Uh, it's, it's faded. It's got the dowel in it. These over here probably have it because they don't see much weather. So there's your center dowel. And there's your center dowel. It's split. Here's a better one. Here's your center dowel. Okay. So that big clump of crystal I showed you in the front is no different than this. Just a larger representation. This here is wood. It, I know it don't look like it, but it's it's so high heated, and them are the pockets of sap that crystallized. So Yeah, I just got so much stuff around here. These are pockets of sap right here. I've done a couple videos on it showing you the sap from trees today. And it's the same thing. It just crystallizes inside. These were pieces of sap, balls of sap. They call it a geode. But that's what it is. This piece here... It's pretty cool. You know, and the sap comes in different colors, not just white. You know, there's iron in it. The iron turns it. See, like, these are petrified wood. But they roll in a river, and they become rounded, and eventually... They'll just turn into a round rock and you, they're not recognizable. There's another nice piece of petrified wood. And you see a lot of the flint, but it's inside the tree. It's part of the tree. Let me go over here. It's a nice piece. But this is all part of the bark. I know for some that sounds crazy, but... So on some of these, uh, this may or may not be a repeat for some people, but I, I just explained not long ago the breakdown from, say, a piece of petrified wood, and then it gets high heated, and it'll turn to this. If it gets hotter, it'll do this, and this is the quartz. And then it starts turning to uh, lava, lava rock. And then eventually it'll turn to this. But I'll take you over here and show you some of the, the quartz that's still in the rock. You come over here, this is part of the quartz that was so high heated, it just totally disintegrated it, just vaporized it. That was quartz at one time. That was quartz. Just like this at one time. It was quartz in the rock. Let me find a piece. Uh, well, they're way over there. But it just got so high heated. Here's a bunch of things I found down at the river. 
but I want to find a couple pieces here. So what's really cool about this though is this is a piece of the tree. This is the limestone part of the root system of the cedar tree. But you put a black light to this, it's incredible. Okay. I'm just looking for a couple certain pieces here. Uh, look at this cool one. It's like a bluish. Oh, that one's pretty cool. Maybe it's not in this pile, or maybe it is. Well, I don't know, I got, so, see, so like this is part of a tree here, but you see what's inside of it. But somebody will tell you that's part of a brain or something. But this is, if you look at this here, okay, that, is no different than like this, all of this, all of that, it's the same thing. This was a piece of wood where I took the core out of it and I made a little flower pot out of it. See, here's another uh, when I was explaining about from the petrified wood to here, to here, to the lava rock. Here's another transition. This is all, this was all part of a rock and it's so high heated that's what it looks like before that. Looking. So you come over here and you'll see this is the wood. Here's the petrified sap. This one was in the fire. You see some of the aluminum from the gutter still on it when my house burnt down. This is wood here, it's part of the bark. That's mica, but it's wood. This is wood. This here is cedar, but I forget what they call this. But you look at this here. This is all wood, but they have a fancy name for it and some lie how it came from the core of the earth. But this is all wood. See here, this is wood, that's wood, and here's the inside of the tree that turned to quartz. And you'll see, you see the gold in here. It was part of the tree. And I, you all know how them pieces get like that. The sap does the same thing, depending on the size and the location. It's pretty incredible. There's another nice piece. Uh, where is it? Uh, this is a good one. It's right here. Here's the sap. And there's the wood. And the gold's in this. If you look at a... Watch this. So you see these, these branches, these knots, where a branch came out. Okay? You see that right here. The same here. And the same here and the same here see that right here this was the same thing this was where a knot was or a branch came out and it filled in 
with the sap. It healed, tried to heal itself. Okay, you see that right here. This is the opening where the branch came out. This is dirty piece. But this oval, that's where a branch was coming out. Similar to that. But it but it was alive when it when it happened. If it wasn't, it wouldn't it wouldn't try to heal itself. Kind of like a dead body cutting cutting a, a, a deceased person and expecting the platelets in the blood to go there to, to heal it. It won't happen. This happened while it was alive. Anyway. This is an interesting piece of petrified wood. And you see, that's what they call flint, but it's inside of a tree. And you gotta remember, these pieces will be on a massive scale. This here's a different kind of tree. And you always have the flat edges, because it's one of them little pieces, and this is a tiny one. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but it is pretty cool. You see here, this is where the mica came from. Somebody might tell you that, uh, let me just show you. Somebody might tell you that this is part of a foot and these are the bones you know uh these were like part of the toes and this is the skin this is part of a foot okay it's not okay look at this it may look like that that these are the toes they're petrified and this is the skin what it is is a mud rock just like this right here, it's a mud rock. This one's not completely petrified yet. It's really soft. This is a mud rock. It's the same thing, but this is petrified. This was mud at one time. I've seen every stage of these from just uh, mud that you could make a pottery out of to this and everywhere in between. But it's easy to fool people when it looks like this and you say you have degrees and and you know you've got that feather and you know all that and that periodic chart you know just got to use a little discernment anyway this went way longer than i thought it was going to but uh one of these days, before I head out here, one of these days, I will open all my bins up and I'll go through all them with you if you guys care to see what's in them. Because there's some, all my really amazing stuff is in there that I've collected. Uh, and if people are interested in doing a short live and going through these bins, uh, I will do that. And you know, when it when it comes to uh, the mud flood, this is I don't know what happened, uh, but short of mudslides coming down and burying things, when you see what buildings really look like, to me it looks like. The soil, the, the earth was like liquefied and things kind of buried themselves, like sank in it. Some kind of frequency or vibration or something. Uh, I don't know, but that's just my take on it. All right, Yvonne, I will, uh, I'll make it a point to do that here. Uh, 
Yeah, Stephanie. I'll make it a point to do that and go through them bins because there's some pretty wild stuff in there. All right, guys. Well, I, I, well, how long is this thing? Gee, 75 minutes, 76. Uh, yeah, all I wanted to do is tell you about my turtle, but uh, I guess we kind of went off the the other end. But anyway, guys, uh, if you get a chance, l look at that YouTube channel, Sir Sick, S-I-R-S-I-C, -S and watch some of his videos on uh, Mudfoss University. Uh, they are quite humorous and uh and i actually i actually like roger uh he he's one of a kind i'll tell you that and you'll understand what i mean if you watch some of these videos from sir sick s-i-r-s-i-c -S and uh you'll enjoy them they're very uh entertaining you'll just have to scroll through his uh you'll just go to his channel and look at videos at least that's what I do, and then scroll through into, until you see uh, like Mud Fossil University ones. Or you can just type in uh, Sir Sick Mud Fossil University or something. I don't know, but uh, they shouldn't be too difficult to find. Uh, there's a couple dozen, so uh, you'll enjoy watching them. And, you know, he, he don't really, like, uh, talk down on him or belittle him. Uh, he's kind of laughing with him, so... Yeah, Alto, I agree, man. Yeah, Tom, he's a weirdo, but uh, like I say, if you watch Sir Six videos, you you, my whole look, outlook on him changed. You know, it, it he's 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 original. He's very original. But some of the stuff he says and claims and shows is way over the top, and he's got to be some kind of. Uh, shill or disinformation i don't know it's it's just so over the top and it's so over the top how people worship him it's so crazy man i am going to fill in south dakota terry uh i got a few places mapped out already uh my second time up there i uh uh I ran into a place where the tree rings were high heated and they were full of crystals and I got a couple pieces of them, but I cannot find the place. So I have a few other places marked, uh, and I would really like to find that place again or, uh, something similar. But I will make sure to get some incredible stuff for you guys. You know, this thing has increased in knowledge. What I see, what I understand. So uh, things are getting better. But like I say, as I mentioned earlier, what the purpose is for these conductive metals that we have today that were ones in the tree, the purpose of it. Uh, it's it's too big. It's It's way too big for my brain. I don't have the knowledge of uh, true science and true technology and uh, the ether and electromagnetic and the, the, pol the, the, the poles and all the radio and radio waves and, and, and uh, microwaves and everything that's in the, in the air around us that we don't see. Happy birthday. Lisa Grace. My turtle, I think, is... Well, I've had it for almost five years, so... Uh, I don't know how old it is, but it's a tortoise. And they live generations, human generations. I mean, gener like a couple hundred years. I think a generation is only 20 years, but... They live several human lifetimes, I think. 
But uh, it was definitely a crazy story that occurred that my neighbor found a tortoise when mine was missing at that exact time. And it wasn't even the one, it wasn't even my turtle. So somebody lost a turtle that was in the, I don't know, it's crazy. Anyway, guys, I'm going to cut it out here. Uh, I will uh, probably do a video sooner than later on my on the tubs and uh, see what we got in there. And then I'll have uh, some new content um, when I get back from South Dakota. I get back, uh, I don't know, I think uh, the first week in May. So, uh, and I may share a couple things while I'm up there, so. Yeah, I don't know about exactly what with the trees. Uh, I had the timeline all figured out at one time. Uh, and Terry did Terry from Flat Out Truth did a pretty good video on who cut down the trees. And I I posted that video on my channel also, so uh anyway guys, hey, thank you for uh showing up. And I will probably see you guys in the next few days when I go through them tubs. All right. All right, guys. Take care.